water. It's the one critical element that ties us all together. A clean water supply is the basis of our communities and a key component in determining where and how we live. Since the settling of central Oklahoma more than 120 years ago, water has been a driving factor in deciding where to develop homes and businesses. In order for central Oklahoma to continue to improve our quality of life, provide for our health and safety, spur economic development, and ensure our individual and collective prosperity, the time is now to make a plan for generations to come. But getting new water takes substantial time and money. So a number of central Oklahoma communities have joined together in a cooperative effort to explore ways to acquire and transport the water they'll need in the future. This collective spirit brought about the Regional Raw Water Supply Study for Central Oklahoma. This study was undertaken not to make a single recommendation, but to offer the participating communities an understanding of their options, allowing them to make the best informed decisions. The project as a whole can be broken down into two simple questions. Why and how? Why is additional water needed? And how can those needs be met? The answers to these questions will ultimately lead the communities to their decision. Why is answered by a look at the projected water source and infrastructure demands. Over the next 50 years, the demand for water in central Oklahoma is expected to more than double. By the year 2030, the need will exceed our existing water rights. But even before that time, in 2020, the pipelines and waterways that convey water to central Oklahoma will be overextended. 2020 may seem far off, but when you consider how long it takes to build a huge pipeline more than 100 miles long, time becomes a critical factor. The next question is how? How do we get the water and from where? How do we move the water and how much will it cost? To answer, four water source delivery options were studied, all taking water from Sardis Lake to Lake Atoka. The option that was favored by the communities participating in the project is also the most economical choice and involves capturing water from the free-flowing Kayamishi River downstream from Lake Sardis into the McGee Creek Reservoir area for conveyance into the new pipeline. Then we must answer the question of how to get this water to our communities. Historically, communities have invested millions of dollars to secure and transport individual water sources. This project focused on maximizing the investments already made by the participants in existing infrastructure and blending resources to the greatest extent possible. The existing pipeline, Oklahoma City's Atoka Pipeline, will not be able to carry the volume required. Therefore, a new parallel pipeline must be built to provide for future needs. The cost will be divided among the participating communities in accordance with how much water they indicated they would need. The study further estimated the impact to each community's water rates in order to pay for their portion of the project. With the why and the how questions answered, we began to identify any obstacles that may stand in the way of meeting Central Oklahoma's future water needs. The first obstacle was water quality. Federal guidelines state that water studies must be completed in order to ensure that the quality of the new water will not degrade the existing water sources. Even though we know that the quality of the potential sources in southeastern Oklahoma is much higher than that of our existing water sources, these studies, which can be a long and tedious process, must be completed to comply with the guidelines. The next obstacle is complying with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Endangered Species Act. This requires us to determine if any aspect of the project would harm the habitat of any threatened or endangered species. 
An evaluation of the option most favored by the group identified several species that require additional studies and or permits. The Kayamishi River is home to three species of freshwater mussels that must be protected. Other threatened and endangered species live along the projected path of the proposed pipeline, such as the American burying beetle, the Arkansas River shiner, and several species of birds. These additional studies to ensure the protection of these species will require both time and money. The final obstacle is the overall cost to complete the project. All capital costs associated with the project, including acquiring, transporting, treating and delivering the water, as well as operating and maintaining the system, were estimated. These costs were then allocated to each participating community based on their projected needs. The biggest expense is delivering the raw water from southeast Oklahoma to the metro area. As mentioned, a new pipeline parallel to the Atoka pipeline is proposed. Pump stations will also be required to convey the water. The estimated cost for the new line parallel to the existing Atoka pipeline is approximately $1 billion. This pipeline should be operational by 2020. By 2030, the new source water right should be acquired and the improvements necessary to allow delivery should be implemented. The estimated cost for this phase ranges between $300 and $450 million. The cost to each of the participants is dependent upon whether they choose to receive raw or treated water. Costs for the various options were provided to the individual participants. System operational costs were also assessed. The greatest operational expense will be the cost to transport the water. Operational and maintenance costs associated with the pipeline, pump stations, and treatment facilities were also included in the evaluation. This brings us to today, where we are faced with some important decisions. Decisions that will impact the future prosperity of our communities. In order to meet the individual and collective needs of our communities, we must work together expeditiously. First, cities that want to participate should join the Oklahoma Regional Water Utilities Trust. These founding trust members will purchase water rights. Future participants will join as customers, only eligible to purchase water from the trust. Once the trust is formalized and an overall program management strategy is developed, several things must be initiated or completed within the next few years. These include securing water rights, finalizing the source and delivery alternatives, selecting pipeline routes, completing environmental studies, and acquiring land. This vital undertaking will ensure delivery of water to the participating communities, providing a plentiful supply of this precious resource, allowing Central Oklahoma to thrive and prosper well into the future.